is soldering made easy, video one. First, I'm going to go over a few things that you will need for soldering. The first thing that you may want to have on hand would be a fire extinguisher, just in case. Some other safety items you might want would be goggles. If you already wear glasses, you probably don't need the goggles. Uh, and also a mask. Uh, if you have good ventilation, you probably don't need the mask. Uh, open window, fan. Uh, I do have a fan going, so I will not be wearing the mask. Uh, another thing that you will need will be a tile, which you can get at Home Depot's low, most uh, hardware stores you can get. A tile. Uh, another thing that you may want to have on hand would be a J board. This will hold your pieces in place. Um, if you don't have J boards available to you, then you can also use floral foam. Uh, it has to be the wet floral foam. You cannot use the dry floral foam, which is this one. This one right here will flame. This one will not. When using them, you may want to spray them with water just a little bit. Another thing you can use for holding your pieces in place would be Play-Doh. There is a clay on the market specifically for jewelry, but I found that Play-Doh is a whole lot less expensive and it goes a long way. Uh, you also will want to have some needle nose pliers on hand for setting your rhinestones. I like to use a silicone tape to wrap my pliers. This also can be found at Home Depot's, Lowe's, or any other hardware store. You can also buy pliers that have nylon jaws for this purpose, but I find that it's a whole lot less expensive and a whole lot easier just to wrap my pliers. And the silicone tape does not get gummy and gooey. When it gets worn, you can just tear it off and put some more on. Another thing that you will want to have on hand are side cutters. And mainly, you just want to have these on hand for cutting your uh, solder wire. I use several different kinds of solder wire. Actually, I use two different kinds of solder wire and also solder paste. This solder wire has a rosin core, so you do not need flux, and I use this one as well. Uh, this one melts at 450 degrees. I mainly use this one, the 300, one that melts at 300 degrees, because it's a whole lot quicker and easier to use. I will use the two together sometimes whenever I'm doing a project that is two parts and I don't want to undo the work that I've done. I will occasionally use a solder paste. I mainly use this if I am trying to go in between two pieces like the back of uh, a brooch and a bar pin or the back of an earring with the post or the clip. Another thing that you will need will be a torch. This is just a mini torch. And you will also need butane with that. Another thing that comes in handy is the third hand. I use this if I'm trying to hold a jump ring in place or a post or clip in place. And also I like to keep a rolling pin on hand because I do use the Play-Doh or some sort of clay to hold my pieces together. The flatter this surface is, the better off you'll be. Today we'll be making this piece right here, this little pendant. Okay, for this project you will need four 32 by 17 navettes with the 32 by 17 settings. I have preset my stones just to make it faster. 
you will also need 12 15 by 7 navettes with the 15 by 7 settings and one 16 millimeter rivoli with a 16 millimeter setting. To me, the hardest part of soldering is actually setting the stones. I'm going to show you how to set a stone real quick. I just use my non dominant hand to hold the stone in setting. Put the stone on top of the setting and I use my thumb and my forefinger to hold them in place. And I come in with my pliers and just bend the prong down. You can, it's easier if you use the jaw of the pliers like that. Or if you are concerned about marring your metal, you can also use the side of the pliers. There are tools on the market for setting stones, but I found it's just as easy to use your pliers. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I'm just using Play-Doh. It doesn't have to be name brand Play-Doh. It can be any non-hardening clay any craft clay. And I roll it out with a rolling pin just so that I have a smooth surface. You do want to roll it out to where it's probably about an inch bigger than the project that you're working on because the edges are going to be thinner than the center portion of it. Okay, I am going to go ahead and start setting my pieces in the dough and once I get that done then we'll start soldering. Okay, I prefer to solder with the stones in. You can do it with the stones out. Either way will work. The reason I prefer to solder with the stones in is because although you risk frying the stones with them in if you apply too much heat if you solder with the stones out, if you get the settings too close together, then your, your stones will not fit after you've soldered sometimes, and then you've wasted the entire piece. If I solder with the stones in and I fry a stone, I can always replace a stone. It's a matter of preference. You can do it either way. You will notice the level of the settings the smaller settings set down lower. You want your piece to be level from the front side, not the back. So you will notice a difference in the height of the shorter, of the smaller settings and the larger settings. Before you be, begin to solder, you want to make sure that your piece is completely level. Um, if you have any pieces sticking up when you solder, that's the way they're going to be when you're done. You don't want to push your pieces too far down into the clay. If you do, it will keep the piece from getting hot enough for the solder to melt. I'm going to go ahead and begin to solder. Just turn my torch on. You want your flame to be about one inch. You want to start applying heat. And you remove the heat and just touch. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries before it gets hot enough. What you are doing is you are heating the metal and then just dabbing the solder. And you want to hit it at every possible joint. And you will notice that the metal will start turning colors. You can generally buff this out or you can plate it. You will notice I'm hitting every joint. 
once your piece begins to heat up, it goes rather fast. With this solder, you can actually use a heat gun. And the heat gun does take a little bit longer, especially for to begin to heat up. Once it's heated up, it goes pretty fast. But the benefit of using the heat gun is that it will not turn your metal colors. Okay, I hit every joint. I'll let this cool a minute and then I'm going to lift it up and make sure that every joint is solid. Okay, once the piece is cooled, I just lift it up and check, try to bend it, not with too much force, but enough force that would equal pretty much every day wear and tear. I'm going to make sure it's solid. Once I've determined that the piece is solid, then I will go back in and I will add any other pieces, which in this case would be a jump ring. And when I mentioned the parts, I failed to mention that this is an 8 millimeter jump ring and it is a 16 gauge jump ring. I'm going to go ahead and set that in place using my third hand. Whenever I set my jump ring in place, when I solder my jump ring, I make sure that the opening of the jump ring is facing the piece, that way it is soldered closed. torch, heat up that area, and I'm just going to dab it. And you will notice when I solder, I remove the flame and I touch the wire to the piece. Okay, this piece is cooled down, I can lift it up, and you will see that there, there is clay down in the piece. All you have to do is take a little bit of warm water and sometimes a toothbrush and a pick to get the extra clay off. Once it is rinsed off, your piece will look like this. Thank you for watching Soldering Made Easy Video 1. Watch for our other videos on other soldering techniques and tips.